Hey, that's right, it's Greg back with another video. In this series, I'm going to be easing the skills gap by giving tips and instructions on mechanical, electrical, controls, and instrumentation to soon be multi-craft technicians, those hoping to make the leap into a multi-craft role, because let's face it, that's where the money is, right? Or just brand new technicians, hoping to gain some basic but important troubleshooting tips. Stick with me because these videos are only going to get better. Now grab your bump cap and let's get to it. If you suspect a bad relay, the first thing you want to do is identify which terminals are normally open and normally closed. Here we have 1 to 4, which is normally closed. 1 to 3 is normally open. 8 to 5 is normally closed. And 8 to 6 is normally open. Typically, the terminals will be numbered, such as this one. I don't think you can see it, but numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And these numbers correspond to the numbers on the diagram. Now by far, one of the most common ways that contactors and relays fail is right here at this point, the contacts themselves. That is because the current passing through will arc just slightly and cause the metal surfaces to corrode and, and that leads to poor conductivity between the two surfaces. Now occasionally, you will get the voltage spike, which can damage the coil. But typically, if that happens, you don't need to have a multimeter or any kind of testing equipment because you'll notice the, the, uh, the housing is discolored, often dark, maybe melted, and often might smell a little funny. So typically your senses will be enough to figure out if the coil has burned up or welded. Now typically, you'll need a multimeter to check continuity between the normally open and normally closed terminals. For instance, we have the 1 and 4, which is normally closed. If we test this by putting the leads on 1 and 4, we'll watch as the ohm reading goes down to zero, meaning there is no resistance, or barely any resistance in reality, between these two points because the contact is closed. If we go to 1 and 3, it will remain open, You'll usually get an OL or a very high reading. Now typically contactors and relays will have a manual toggle switch that you can use a screwdriver to toggle between the open and closed states. Here in ours, terminals 1 and 3 are normally open. If we apply the leads to 1 and 3, we'll see that the ohm reading remains the same. If we toggle to, to close to the close state, we watch the ohms drop down to zero, meaning that there's a good contact. Observing back and forth as we open and close. In a typical industrial environment, you won't have the luxury to pull the relay off to check the resistance. In that case, just check the voltage drop across the terminals. And luckily, most relays and contactors will have an indicator of the state it's in, if it's energized or not. This one here has an orange tab that shows up when the coil is energized. That way you can know which terminals you need to check to make sure that there actually is a good contact. I asked senior maintenance techs across the country and you responded, and the lack of logic-based troubleshooting skills by newer technicians was what you anticipate being the biggest challenge for the maintenance industry in the next five years. This short clip was just an unofficial sneak peek into an upcoming troubleshooting course designed with new maintenance technicians in mind. Visit idcon.com or click the link below in the description to learn more about this and other maintenance and reliability courses. If you have suggestions for related troubleshooting topics, or if you think I missed something important, come at me in the comments, bro. Thanks for watching and remember to keep it simple. <laughs>